Hello, so today we're going to do a video on a Geiger counter, well, not actually a Geiger counter, an ionisation chamber unit I can't actually power because it uses obsolete batteries, but I thought people would still be interested in maybe seeing the inside of it, and it's just a neat little piece of history. So if I can actually get this in frame properly, which is always harder than you imagine when doing videos like this, this is an AVO meter, Mark IV. Now, AVO is a British company that sadly doesn't exist anymore as far as I'm aware, that used to do all sort of multimeters, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, amperes, all those kind of electronic devices. So naturally during the Cold War they made radiation detectors because if you know, um, we've probably talked about this before and a lot on other channels, very simple radiation detectors are very similar electronically to sort of electricity detectors and things like that. You know, they only they just basically use a different component inside to detect radiation but lots of the sort of resistors and all that are the same. So this would have been used by the Royal Observer Corps. I don't know if the British Army would have used these as well. Um, but essentially what this did was it would tell you, you know, what radiation doses you were being exposed to and this is actually surprisingly portable if you see it compared to the size of my hand. If you've seen the previous thing I've done a video on that was like this, that was way way bigger than this thing. Um, I'll have to get that out at some point and do a side by side comparison of them. But anyway, this one measures between 100 milli Röntgen and 100 Röntgens per hour. So if I hold that up there and hopefully it will focus. There you go, you can see that it's one of those non-linear scales that goes up faster and faster as it goes up. So basically it wouldn't tell you background radiation, but it would tell you if you're being exposed to dangerous levels of radiation for short-term health issues. Obviously the problem is with something, like we've said before about radiation, if you're being exposed to something higher than background for like extended periods, you know, that's bad, but it's not like acute radiation syndrome bad. But these are obviously designed for the Royal Observer Corps or Army or whatever, that they could basically turn them on and see, you know, if there was fallout imminent, essentially. So, there's only two controls on it, really. There's, you turn it on or off, there's a calibration bit there and a zero. Calibration zero is pretty similar. Zero would just be when you turn it on, getting it zero to zero, if you've got a bit of needle movement. And calibration is, you know, what's something you do with a known check source to get it, you know, right, so it's not, say, estimating too high or too low on the thing. And then check would just be where it would do a battery or circuit check just to see the needle moves. Right, so there's not much I can show you on the outside of this. Um, so in a minute I'll open it up and we'll see what's on the inside. But here's where the batteries were connected. And as you can see it's one of those strange sort of obsolete battery connectors. Um, because obviously these are a bit like some of the older British things where they all used a kind of battery that doesn't really exist anymore. Which is a kind of sad thing with these but the seller was actually selling it quite cheap because of the reason they didn't know if they could get this working or not. So, with my power bank, it might be possible to power these, but, you know, I'm not going to hold my breath or anything like that, because I found with some of the other meters, trying to power them with the power bank isn't that reliable. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to undo the screws with the video stopped, so you don't have to sit through ages and me just fast-forwarding footage of taking screws off, and then we'll get into the unit itself and see if there's anything interesting inside, then we'll just reassemble it without hopefully damaging anything. Okay, so what's essentially happened is I've taken the four retaining screws out there, and then the top bit just comes off. So on the top, as you can see, there's basically just the um, this bit, like the display. So the guts of the meter are here. So let's see, do these just come out? Right, here we are. They just come out. Now, I reckon that might be a check source right in the bottom there. We'll have a look in a minute. Um, but yes, this is the meter itself, as you can see. Um, that's the ionization chamber of it, pretty small. But essentially all this is, is um, yeah, an ionization chamber. What's quite interesting with this one is all the parts you'd need to power this, um, or is that a check source there? Or is that just the um, circuit checker? Hang on, I'm very bad at getting this in frame. All right, let's try again. So that might be a check source on that bit. Um, because sometimes they do, or that could just be something that completes a short circuit to do the um, battery check type function. Um, but what's interesting with one of these, if you bought one, you could very easily probably connect this to a multimeter um, with a battery attached, and actually have this as a functional little ionization chamber, because most of the resistors and transistors and all that are actually on the bottom of it, rather than it being, you know, something else in the thing. As you can see, the case is very simple. This is a, certainly a much simpler and nicer one than the other one I opened. The other one was a lot more sophisticated, but the other one was basically one of these AVO meters, but um, if I can get that all in frame. The other one was basically an AVO meter that had been upsized, and, um, you know, then everything was um, sort of for a higher radiation range. But this thing is certainly a lot nicer in terms of... Um, you know, it's compact and actually is compact because when I first looked at this I thought it was going to be gigantic but, you know, all the components p 
put together like it, uh, just basically that. So what I'll do is I'm just going to go get an actual Geiger counter because I want to now measure is there actually any ionising radiation coming from this, as in does it come with a check source or not. Um, you know, it's possible that if the previous seller could have had one and removed it or whatever. But, you know, like I said, because the other thing like this had quite a strong bit of strontium-90 in it, I want to see if this one does. Right, I've got my Radioscan 701A, and what we're going to do now is see if this picks anything up at all from any of these bits. Sounds like that might potentially be picking something up. Or maybe not. Let's try the bit on the bottom there, if I can get this in deep enough. It might be easier to remove this bit from the other side, actually. But this does seem to be chirping a little bit higher than normal, so it wouldn't surprise me if there is something here. So it looks like this bit at least does unscrew from the bottom, so let's have a look at what this is. Now, I don't know if that's just, like, literally a plug, or if that is a check saw, so let's just put that... assume that's just a plug then this one because yeah the um yeah the radius scan certainly isn't reacting to this thing so this isn't a check source but I think there might be under here a check source let's just see is that slightly higher than background it's hard to get the angle right on that thing um, but yeah, anyway, it does seem slightly ticking higher than background here, so I think somewhere on this casing there might be a check source. So what I'm going to do is stop the camera again, very carefully try and get at stuff without breaking anything, and then I'll see if I can find an actual check source on this um, whole assembly of parts somewhere. Okay, so here's the ionisation chamber itself, disassembled, very, very simple. It basically has two retaining screws to keep the cover onto this bit. That's where you can see all the resistors and that, um, and the vacuum tubes for it to generate sort of, you know, the high voltage that the ionisation chamber runs on. And then basically the idea is when this is here, um, you know, anything ionising that goes between the outside casing of this and the inside bit um, basically just generates, you know, a current that gives a reading. But the strange thing is, although the Geiger seems to be ticking higher than background here, I've not actually found any check sources at all on any of this, unless there was a bit actually on the top of the lid, uh, which I wouldn't think, but... But yeah, there's not been anything obvious like in the other one I opened, because with the other one I opened, basically, although it was a different shaped ionisation chamber, essentially there was like a little bit that was like a screw in there, and that was where the strontium-90 source was. So, um, yeah, this one certainly doesn't seem to have something like that. But for me, this is very interesting to open one of these up, and I'm going to put it back together now. Sorry if a lot of this has been out of frame, just simply because this kind of meter, essentially, is, you know, very similar to the other one, but also different. You know, where you can tell they had a kind of similar design regime with them, same sort of metals used and all that. But the other one was a lot bigger, you know, and had a higher radiation detection range. But personally, if I was going to be issued one of these back in the day, you know, when you had all the batteries for them, I think I'd rather just have this one, because, you know, they both cover the same low levels of radiation, but this one goes up to, you know, 100 Ronken, but at that point, if it's 100 Ronken, you don't want to be sticking around. So I think a meter like this, you know, is perfectly acceptable for what it is. So, yeah, what I'm going to do now is just reassemble it all, um, and, um, yeah, that will be the end of the video. But, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, so that's an AVO meter Mark IV. Very simple British ionisation detector, sort of radiation detector. Obviously, the idea of this one was it was a lot more compact than the Mark II Radiac. Um, so made by AVO, who sadly don't exist anymore. But yeah, a lovely bit of history if you're into radiation detectors. Because, again, this is, you know, something that clearly isn't made in this style anymore. Because they can do it with, you know, stuff like this, which, you know, is a lot more compact and sensitive.